So now we'll go on to kind of the loops and the um, conditional code blocks and how you can apply, let's say here, logic to your map. So going back to our standard set of variables here, uh, you know, A to one, et cetera, something that we can do is this um, increment or a, a decrement. So when we run, run on loops, we want to say basically like, so however many images are open, if let's say there's 10, we will say, you know, for 10 times, do something. So on the first time, do it, and then the loop number would increase to the second time, and then the third time, and the fourth time. So, so you do these increments to plus plus or decrement as minus minus. So if we say result one, C times D, so we can resolve that to be three times zero, and that equals zero. But then we say B plus D plus plus, well, that equals two because two plus zero equals zero. But the next time I run that calculation, D will equal one because we've added one to it. So D is a variable, it's got a value of zero, but we've said after you've used it once, add a number to it. So now D equals one. So if we said C times D, so three times not zero anymore, it's now equal to one, we need to three. So um, incrementing is used in uh, when we uh, syntax in loops, and we'll cover this soon. So in a decrement, you would go C times D equals zero. Here I've said, before the next time, I want to, you know, uh, minus one. So before it was D plus plus, now it's minus, and it's going to run it initially, and then every time thereafter. So B to two plus minus one is one. And now it would equal my oh, now it equals you know, minus two. And if we do three times, what's that? No. Equals minus one. Minus one. Yeah, yes, that's correct. Okay, on to loops. There's different types of loops that you can run. Additional code blocks. So you can have like an if statement. So an if statement, the code will run once. But if the condition is met, it'll run. You can have optional extra else if code blocks. So that will only run once if they're true in the order that you place them. And we'll cover this in a little bit. Um, and then you can also have at the end a final else that will just default. So this generally will run once for one type of condition. For loops, well, they'll run for a number of times. So you can tell it how many times to run, whether it's you know, one time or however many objects you found or results you have, they'll run for that thing. So the number of runs can be user defined. So you can just say run 10 times, or you can say run for how many results there are. And it could be a, a dynamic thing. And then there's while loops. So these are a code block that will run an unlimited amount of times while the condition is true. You do want to be careful with these. This is how you craft people. Um, so they're great for when you don't know how many times to run the code. Cool. So I often use while as a command that says, while the number of images open is greater than zero, run the command close. And that's going to just keep running until there's no more images open. So, you know, if you work with PG and done, you know, a bit of a pipeline, you open an image, you do a max projection. Now you've got two windows. And then you might split channels. So you've got your original image, and then if it was a three channel image, another three. So you've got four windows. And you might only grab one of those and you go off and work off. But then when you finish, there's all this junk windows open. So you're going to close all of those. You can do that. Um, say you want to close everything except for the original file you opened, then you can say, well, file doesn't equal one, it will keep 
going down until the last window. And leave one window open. Uh, so yeah, that, that's a while saver. So going into a bit more detail, so the, the if statements, and you'll see that when you type if, for, and while, they change to a blue color. So we put the condition in a bracket. So while, so if something is true, then it's going to then do something. And we use the squiggly braces to block out the code, right? So um, it's not necessary in Fiji, but it can be useful to indent your code under your loop. So then when you're looking at a big wall of code, you can see that all this stuff that's in, in, indented is kind of readable. So what does that look like? So if we have something that says n of images, it's currently, we define this variable as zero. So if n of images is greater than zero, or you can not equal zero if you want it, then do something. So that something is then define a variable called title and get titles the commands that, print, that get the image title. And then you could print or well, title kind of equals whatever the file is. But you wouldn't want this to run if there was no images open because PG would throw up an error going, oh, there's no images. So you have this, you know, if this is the case, but it's not zero images, then do it. Make sense? Sure. Uh, okay, so the condition is false, code will not run. Um, Exactly what it said. So you can have these else and else if as well. So we had the, the if. So this is, um, it uses the else keyword to run a different thing for the, you know, for the if. Um, so you could say, like, if this is the case, do this, else, do this other thing. So, you know, do the code block or maybe warn the user going uh, wrong. They will run sequentially. So you can have like if, else if, you can have multiple else if, and then a final kind of this is the, the last option. Um, so they'll, they'll, they do run in the order you type them out. So if n of n, n images equals four, so the number of windows open is four, we could write, you know, if the number of images is equal to zero, print error, there's no images open. But if, you know, that isn't the case, we could say, well, else if, if it's greater than zero, it'll say, I have at least one image. Because it's just more than zero. It could be 10, it could be 100, it could be one. Then there's this one that says, if it equals, is equal to four, I have exactly four. Now that won't run because you've already satisfied this else if, right? So while they're sequential, only one of these will run. So um, it didn't equal that, so that one didn't run. It, this is like true, so it'll run, and then none of this will offer. To be honest, like it's pretty rare that you use these else if. You can pretty much just go if and and that's it. Um, the other one is for loops. You do use these a lot. So it begins with the word for. It's pretty obvious. Uh, but its structure is you have to initialize it, then you have some condition, and then you would increment it. And for each of those times it runs, you then put the code in the, the, the same kind of really bracket. Um, so typically as well, you, you would have like a loop index that you might do something to. So what does that look like? So the initialization here is zero. So for this variable i, it equals zero. While i, I is less than 10, run the code. And each time it runs the code, increment i by one. Mm -hmm. So we then have this other variable called j, where j is 10 times whatever loop number we're up to. And we're going to print j. 
and they're going to also show you what I looks like. So it loops through. Let's see what it's doing. Does that kind of make sense? We've defined it to run 10 times. So you can put anything. It started at zero, and while it's less than 10, it runs, and each time it increases by one. But notice it didn't get to 10, because 10 is not less than 10, 10 is equal to 10. So you could put less than equal and have that cap. Or if you want it to run, you know, 10 times, but we start at zero, then it, okay, uh, you'll see that it starts at zero. So that's one, two, you know, put a one ahead. So the first time it runs, it's like I equals zero, 10 times zero equals zero. So the first one was zero, zero, right? Then it, I've seen it run through and it's gotten to nine. So it's like um, the second time it'll run will be one, so then 10 times one equals 10. Then, then, then it will run again because I would equal two, and that's still true, like it's still less than 10, but so run. And then once it gets to here, this would increment it. So that would be three, and it runs, becomes four, and run. So the plus plus is an increment which means you go from one, the next time it runs, we automatically add, like the next time we use that variable, we've added one. Um, mm -hmm. In theory, you could put plus two. So we could say an index equal, or this variable called IDX equals zero. And while IDX is less than the number of results we have, we could say, and then we would increment it, print, you know, area one or area zero, then the next time it runs will be area one, area two, area three. And that really will run the number of times that you have results. So if your script was like, open the image, find all the nuclei, and then what's their area? Well, image one might have 50 nuclei, and image two might have 10 nuclei. So you can't have a fixed number of loops that it runs. So you set, you know, something to equal this, you know, um, you know, how many results there are. Um, yeah, or like, um, instead of end results, you could say array length or something. So like if it was like the number of files, that's all the number of elements in that file is you could do so. Um, and then lastly, there's this while condition. And this, as I said, will is structured by while and then some condition, if it's true, it's going to do whatever you put in here. So, uh, what did I say? You use parentheses, same thing. The loops are always wrapped by these phrases. Um, typically, the value of the variable for the attenuation condition gets checked or modified before the next iteration. And otherwise, it's going to keep running. So, I have an example. So we're going to walk through this example. We have a lovely bowl of ice cream. And we're going to assume that finished equals false. So we're not finished because the bowl of ice cream is still full. So while finished doesn't equal true, true, I want to run this thing that can I see the bottom of the bowl? So if I can see the bottom of the bowl, then I'm going to change finished to be true. If I don't see the bottom of the bowl, I'm going to keep eating ice cream. So can I see the bottom of the bowl? No. So I ate a bit of ice cream. Then it runs again, because this is still set to be, we're not finished, right? So then I eat a bit more, because this wasn't satisfied as being true. So else, we keep eating. We keep eating. Oh, now it's finished, right? So if I can see the bottom of the bowl, then that would be so true. I can see the bottom. Now I'm going to change my state of finish to be true. So then this won't run because this was satisfied to be true. And this won't run again because finished now does equal true. Does that make sense? A bit abstract, but. Okay. Third exercise is using loops. So I think for this one, we have an image file in that example folder. And 
you want it to have a loop that iterates over the whole stack printing the slice number. So you might say something like print current slice plus some variable or something, right? And there's this command and slices that reports the number of slices in the that to be hint. And then bonus, if you have time and you want to do the extra homework, is to say this is that um, standard command that I said I write in most of my scripts, where while the number of images is greater than zero, keep closing image files, windows, right? So how could you do this, but using a for loop instead of a while loop? That's the challenge. So it's pretty extended. Um, you can also just cheat and look at that. Oh, that's how you do it. That makes sense. Um, because as a caveat, a lot of the times when you're writing your own code, you're probably going to go to Google first and see someone else's version of it. Oh, okay, that's how they probably do it. But have a go at that. Who had the question, the image has 22 slices, and this is clearly from a different example image, but I got like 44 times the Who had that question? The slices are 2D elements, so there were two channels. Um, but you can basically, hopefully see that it had a loop that looks something like this, where it starts at zero and it goes to the number of slices and prints the number of slices up. So, um, for the bonus bit, which was while the number of images is greater than zero, you um, keep closing, you could have here like i equals the number of images. So if it was 10, it starts at 10. And then each time it runs, it takes one away until it's zero. Or you could take this equal to zero. Or something. 